Welcome to the All Ball Show, presented by Abstract Sports, where we bring sports back to life. I'm your host, Kyle Clay 2K. In the All Ball Show, we focus on basketball-only content. And to tip things off, I'm covering every single team in the NBA, from worst to best in each conference. I'm going to look at their rosters and discuss how I think they're going to perform this upcoming season. Let's get the ball rolling on the number six seed of the Eastern Conference from last year, the Miami Heat. The Miami Heat are a member of the Southeast Division in the Eastern Conference. They play their home games at the American Airlines Arena in downtown Miami. Sounds saucy. Their head coach is Eric Spolstra. He's had great success with that franchise, having coached LeBron James and and saw some championship rings back in the day, not all that long ago. They won rings in 2006, 2012, and 2013. The Miami Heat went 44 and 38 last year, uh, 31 and 21 in, in conference play, 26 and 15 at home, and 18 wins to 23 losses on the road. I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of curious to see why the Miami Heat were a number six seed. I don't really remember what pushed them over the top last year. But let's take a look at the players that they had on the roster throughout the entire year. Some of those names include Bam Adebayo, Luke Babbitt, Goran Dragic. Uh, that's probably why. Dude's a great leader, great passer, gets all of his guys involved. Wayne Ellington, I have his autograph on a Lakers flag when he played there as a rookie. Uh, Udonis Haslam, he's a Miami Heat veteran. He's been there his entire career. James Johnson, Tyler Johnson, Derek Jones, Rodney Magruder, Jordan Mickey, Kelly Olenek. That's another good reason why. Uh, that guy's a very dominant power forward. He can shoot the ball. Um, kind of makes you think twice about what the team can do with him on the floor. Uh, Josh Richardson, Dwayne Wade did come back after the trade deadline from the Cleveland Cavaliers. LeBron probably sent him away because they weren't as productive as he was as he was hoping. And Dwayne Wade did bring some hope to that team. He's coming back for one more year with them, I believe, next year. Dion Waiters is still there. Derek Walton, o- Okaro White, Hassan Whiteside, a very athletic center for the Miami Heat. And then Matt Williams and Justice Winslow. So that totals for 19 players on the roster throughout the entire year last year. Some of the highest points per game averages on the team were Goran Dragic with 17.3, Dion Waiters 14.3, Hassan Whiteside at 14. But just to paint the real picture, there were nine players who averaged over 10 points a game. So guys were coming off the bench and providing a lot of activity for those starters and and kind of relieving them while they were uh, getting some rest on the bench. And then you've got some. I want to look at the team totals here on you know how certain players did. Uh, they had two players in quadruple digits for scoring on the year. Goran Dragic had almost 1,300. Josh Richardson with a, about 1050. And then Kelly Olynyk 870, 860, 840, 788, and it goes on from there. Only 19 guys on the roster. Again, this trend is it seems it's not it's not like it's a lot different from some of these other teams having had 22, 20 guys on the roster throughout the year. 19 is not all that bad. The best we've seen, I guess, that you could say was 15 players on the roster when we were talking about the Charlotte Hornets, I believe it was. So, But let's take a look at the players who seem to be returning for this upcoming season. You've got Bam Adebayo coming back, Aron Dragic, Wayne Ellington, uh, Udonis Haslam, Kelly Olenek, Dwayne Wade, Deion Waiters, Hassan Whiteside. You know, this, this Miami team does have a lot of interesting talent, a lot of big guys. Um, but a lot of big guys who are good in different ways. Like Haslam, I'm pretty sure he's he's pretty much riding the bench at this point. He's a 15-year vet, really big guy. His body's probably hurting him, to be honest. But they got a young guy in Bam Adebayo to come in and uh, hopefully pres- provide some activity for him. Uh, he is a center, 6'10", 243, out of University of Kentucky. So, uh, And he is a, a rookie this year. So something fun to watch there. But Kelly Olenek, another big guy you can shoot. And then you have uh, Hassan Whiteside, the athletic center. So you probably have uh, Whiteside at the starter, Dwayne Wade starting, Deion Waiters also. <laughs> oh, man, Goran Dragic. They're a pretty good team. Um, I just think that people look over them because they're in the Eastern Conference where uh, LeBron's not on their team. And it's all about the top four teams in each conference, it seems like. And from there, it just kind of drops off. You know, one conference, it, it's like two teams at the top, and then it drops off. And the other one, it's like four at the top, and then it drops off. So very interesting uh, going forward in the Eastern Conference here. I'm, I have to say, I don't have a lot of players that I'm tied to with the Miami Heat. Uh, so I don't really, I'm not like 
personally excited to watch them play this year. Um, other than the fact that Dwayne Wade is a legend, he deserves to be respected, and I, I, I like watching him play. He's very exciting, even in his older age. But yeah, I, I probably won't be trying to find a, a Miami Heat game to watch, and I, I don't really think they're going to do as good as some of these other teams I've talked about. I mean, we're talking about the Milwaukee Bucks, who are who are on the rise. Some teams up near the top who might face a little bit of chemistry issues, stuff like that. So... I think the Heat maybe drop a couple spots, one or two spots anyway. The Bucks maybe move up. Uh, Pistons probably move up into there too. So maybe the Heat can grab that number eight spot and push the Wizard, Wizards outside. Uh, we'll just have to kind of see how that breaks down come April, May, June. So, so the number six Miami Heat took on the number three Philadelphia 76ers in the Eastern Conference first round. The Miami Heat had a really tough battle having to play against the 76ers in the playoffs last year. They... Gave up their first game on the road to Philadelphia. They happened to win one in Philadelphia in game two, but then they managed to lose the next three consecutive games to be defeated and eliminated from the Eastern Conference playoff bracket. If they have to face a team like the 76ers again next year, I don't see them standing much of a chance again because they, the 76ers have Markel Fultz back and a little bit of a stronger lineup and and players who were coming back after a great year uh, hoping to build on the momentum they had from this year so should be an interesting time for the Miami Heat should they make it into the playoffs I just don't think they're going to uh, climb that far as far as they did this year anyway that does it for the Miami Heat and that does it for this episode of the all ball show presented by abstract sports How do you think the Miami Heat are going to do next year? And also don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel if you want to see us uh, talk about more basketball content as the season goes on. I'm your host, Kyle Clay 2K. I'll see you in the next one.